Can Gut Bacteria Fix Type 2 Diabetes? Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. So let's get right into this video. So can gut bacteria fix type 2 diabetes? This is the burning question. Okay. There is a bacteria called Acomantia mucinophilia, discovered in 2004. It's one of approximately 25 live bacteria in the mucus lining of the GI tract. It makes up 1 to 5% of the entire gut microbiome, and it's been shown to be approximately 0.5% in the small intestine, okay, where a lot of the absorption and nutrient uh, absorption occurs. Okay? Now, when you look at this, Acromycea municipalia, or what we call AM, we're going to call it AM from moving forward, is a keystone bacteria. It has a few different functions, but basically low AM is associated with obesity, type 2 diabetes, and inflammatory bowel disease. High AM is sometimes associated with IBSC, Parkinson's disease, and MS. Now, I run a lot of GI tests or stool exams in our office, and it's one of those bacteria that we check when we do the test. I see a lot of low AM. I rarely ever see a high AM. So most often it's this category that we're looking at and trying to help with individuals. Now, the mechanism is this. Acromantia, AM, helps to break down mucus or the mucin, okay? And the breaking down of that will help to produce what we call short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids are acetate, propanate, and butyrate, and they feed the good bacteria or the keystone bacteria in our gut. So it helps to build a good gut uh, bacterial ecosystem. Okay. When you break down the mucus layer, the epithelial cells will produce more layer, uh, uh, mucus or mucin. And this in itself gives you a fresh layer of protection against um, particles of food or viruses or bacteria that's harmful to us crossing into the bloodstream. So it's really a protective mechanism here. It also stimulates GLP-1. Everyone knows about Ozempic and how you can use it for weight loss and diabetes and so forth. Basically, Ozempic impacts this. So GLP-1, right? It stimulates GLP-1. Satiety. So people who have higher levels of AM will have more satiety after a meal. So they're not eating afterwards again, right? So their brain knows that it's full and it will shut down the mechanism of like, I'm hungry, I want to eat more. So satiety. In return, it's going to reduce glucose by controlling glucose, right? You're not eating or snacking afterwards because you're full, okay? So here are some of the studies and showing some of the validity to this. So there's two studies here, um, two um, charts right here. Okay. This chart was taken from Dr. Ruscio, who, who's an excellent functional medicine practitioner. He has a YouTube channel. You might want to go check out his videos. They're really good. Okay. So I took this and they did uh, a breakdown here. One is uh, AM. And the other one would be lacto and bifidobacteria, lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, okay? So this study was one randomized control study of 76 patients, and this was one meta-analysis, meaning it took a bunch of different studies. I mean, they're not really equivalent studies, but this is a meta-analysis of uh, 902 patients. Basically, when they looked at this, this AM study showed a uh, reduction of 2% or 0.2% in your A1C or your hemoglobin A1C, which is your three months average of blood sugar. So they showed an average reduction of 0.6 in the A1C. So let's say a patient has uh, diabetes and their A1C is 8.6. It shows a reduction of 0.6, okay? Fasting glucose by a reduction in three milligrams per deciliter, and there's no really impact on the insulin resistance aspect of this. 
this lacto and bifido uh, studies or the meta-analysis showed a 0.2%, same thing, but actually had a better reduction in fasting glucose at 7.2, okay? And it did impact insulin resistance. Okay. So if you look at these two studies, it seems like lacto and bifido is probably better or, you know, there's more studies involved in it. Here's another one, acromycea, one randomized control study, 32 patients, reduction in cholesterol or LDL cholesterol of 5.3. There was also a reduction in total cholesterol, I think around eight. Okay. Triglyceride reduction, 12.5, weight loss of five, and it helped to reduce leaky gut markers, right? Or something called lipopolysaccharides. Lacto and the bifido, uh, bifido uh, two meta-analysis with over 4,000 patients, LDL cholesterol reduction of 4.08, triglyceride reduction of 3.3, weight loss of 1.3, and the markers for lipopolysaccharide, zonulin, and, and the lactulose mannitol testing. There was improvement uh, there for leaky gut. So why is that important, right? It seems like, metabolically speaking, this is, uh, acromycea is actually a little bit better, and also better for the weight loss aspect of it. They both impact really leaky gut, but this has more studies on it. Leaky gut is very important because leaky gut in itself creates a lot of metabolic issues or health conditions or malabsorption issues or inflammation. So these bacteria, it just goes to show you that these keystone bacteria are very important in managing that. Okay. Interestingly enough, right, a lot of these patients in the study were on metformin because they have diabetes. It has been shown that metformin in itself helps to increase acromancia and increase short-chain fatty acids, right? So if you increase acromancia, you're going to increase short-chain fatty acids. Increase short-chain fatty acids, you're going to increase commensal bacteria or good bacteria. So you can hypothesize that if you take metformin, it's not, the only mechanism is not just reducing blood sugar, but the mechanism that helps to reduce blood sugar is acromancia and short-chain fatty acids because it impacts glucose control as well as GLP-1, okay? So, so what do we do naturally? What can we do to help ourselves improve over time if you didn't take anything, let's say? Other methods to increase acumancia. Low calorie diets will, will also, has been shown to increase acumancia. Intermittent fasting, fasting, prolonged fasting. I actually did a video on this so I'll link that at the end of the video and I'll put it up in the corner here. So fasting increases acromancia. Exercise will change the gut microbiome. Use of polyphenols like cranberry, concord grapes, clove, peppermint, all will help uh, produce more acromancia or even good bacteria in general. And the obvious elephant in the room, you gotta reduce stress, you gotta improve your sleep, and then you gotta improve your diet. Otherwise, you know, it doesn't matter how many supplements you take, you got to do the basic things to help yourself and then utilize some of these bacteria. Now, because one company really holds the patent on the acumancia, it's a little bit more expensive, right? Lactobacillus and bifidobacterium it tends to be cheaper. So if you're going to use it and you want to use, like, you want to go full head on with treating yourself, okay? I would use acromancia, lactobacillus, and bifidobacterium species. I would also use Saccharomyces boulardii and um, a soil-based probiotic. You can really combine all these things to really hit the gut. With that, there is a caveat. There are individuals who have um, irritable bowel or SIBO, and you give them all these probiotics, it actually might make them feel worse. So you, you want to be cautious, but uh, what you can do is really bombard the gut with all these bacteria and see how you improve. Or in the case of SIBO and some of these inflammatory bowel issues, 
you might want to go one at a time, right, in small doses, and then increase it over time, okay? So in order to do this correctly, you, you should, or in, in order to manage your blood sugar correctly, you should do all these things over here first, and obviously you got to exercise and all the other stuff, and then consider fixing your gut using bacteria uh, to help improve glucose control, all right? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.